Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today, I'm pleased to present you with another featured match for Sam Mann's Black Crusade, his online Conquest LCG competitive league. What makes today's game particularly special is this is the first featured table from overseas. Uh, so this is going to be the East division of the West and East. It's going to be the Loyalist Legions. And today, at uh, the top of the screen, we have a user named Terra Lord. Thus far, he's the only undefeated player in the East division. He's got five consecutive wins, no losses whatsoever. And this is actually going to be the sixth week of the Black Crusade. And if you cannot tell, uh, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather here, but we're live at six in the morning with another fascinating Octagon game. And at the bottom of the screen, we have user Prezi. He's four wins, two losses, but his strength of schedule is strong enough that he got matched against uh, Terra Lord. And for anyone that does not know, strength of schedule is basically uh, determined by the overall win and loss rate of the players that you've beaten. So the better players that you've beaten, the higher your strength of schedule, and uh, the better players you get paired against. And that's why Prezi is up against Terra Lord. Terra Lord has chosen to play as Eldarath Starbane, our original Eldar faction warlord, Looks like both players have ended up keeping their opening hands, and now we've got Terra Lord uh, being a little bit more aggressive. So Astra Militarum, as per usual, is doing a little bit of deploy stalling. Broderick War throws out a copy of Troop Transport as a limited effect. You can get up to two Guardsman tokens into play. <clears throat> At a green planet, those are 2-2 two -two soldier trait tokens. Note, our first three planets and planet number five are all going to be green, so this could be a very quick win for Broderick Ward, depending on what exactly he draws. Getting two troop transports in your opening hand is incredibly nasty, just because that at a green planet is going to be four 2-2 two -two tokens. We've got a Talar and Raiders that, uh, thanks to Broderick, if an enemy warlord is present at a green planet, it's going to be able to attack for a grand total of three. We've got summary execution, so it looks as though the way that these uh, icons are doled out, like these first three planets also happen to have blue tech icons, so even if it's not through green that Broderick starts to accumulate those, he's got that signature summary execution in his hand, and that could be a really devious effect to maybe have him win two of these three planets and then win on Karnath unexpectedly here at planet number four, as opposed to having to stall till planet number five, even if he can't win right away. But he's also got a copy of Preemptive Barrage to give three of his units ranged, which could be just incredibly nasty. But then on in our Eldar player's side of the table, he's got uh, Nullify to cancel out a powerful event like Preemptive Barrage. He's got some formidable army units of his own, like the Warlock Destructor, an incredible play with Gift of Isha, so he can recur that back onto the tabletop should it end up being destroyed. And the combos keep on coming with Warlock Destructor because it's a Psyker trait unit, and therefore, for the cost of one resource, Eldarath Starbane can not only exhaust a unit himself, but Mind War... Uh, without having to exhaust a unit or bother doing anything like that, like the AM Suppressive Fire, you can just pick and choose an enemy unit to be exhausted. And even though Broderick War confers immunity to routing and retreating, uh, he of course does not do anything whatsoever in regard to preventing card abilities. We've also got a Bealtain Guardians for economy. And then just assessing the tabletop itself, looks like we've got that Talarn Raiders positioned at planet number three for Broderick War. Note, he's got initiative at the first planet, and the Talarn Raiders as a two hit point unit, it's going to be very important that that potentially has the chance to attack first uh, during a given, you know, combat, just because it's so squishy. And it looks like Prezi has finally passed. So he's got four resources, uh, four cards in hand. He's got two two shield value cards and one one shield value card. Card. And uh, then for our Eldar player, he's still deciding if he wants to throw out that Warlock Destructor or not. But he's got a decent bit of shielding himself, and uh, I'll be very curious to see how exactly that copy of Nullify comes into effect. Broderick, since he increases the attack value of all units, uh, it just seems of 
like it could make a monumental difference, being able to just cancel out the effects of a preemptive barrage. You're down a shield card, you're down a resource, and you're shit out of luck when it comes to giving three of your AM units ranged. But, note, planet number one, we've got Anxious Infantry Platoon sitting here. Broderick Wars got initiative. Uh, if Eldarath stops playing any additional units, if he shows up at planet number one, he's going to be able to exhaust the platoon. He can attack for one, but then he potentially takes a swing of four in return each and every time because it's stationed at a green planet you basically ignore the forced reaction associated with that unit and I would definitely not be surprised to see Eldorath give up planet number one. Yavarn is generally extraordinarily low priority, especially for an Astro Militarum player to activate, just because uh, AM players don't really run a lot of elites. You're not going to be able to get a significant profit from that card. Something much more, uh, you know, something much more important for Eldorath to try to win is going to be Planum here, where he's, where he's got a copy of a stationed Hellion Gang, a 2 2 with a command icon, because if you win at that planet, like let's say Broderick War wins at planet number one, uh, okay, looks like Eldorath just wants to try to block off his opponent then because uh, we've got a Warlock Destructor at planet number one, and therefore I can only imagine that's going to be Eldorath. Uh, showing up perhaps at planet number one just to shut down the anxious infantry platoon. Uh, we might see the troop transport being activated at that point, but it's kind of, maybe it's an effort to corral Broderick's movement. Like if Broderick doesn't show up at this planet, but Eldorath does, uh, then uh, Eldorath steals initiative. He can kill off the anxious infantry platoon. Then we might have to see these troop transports being activated. And uh, if we do, then that's going to be uh, the you know, support gone. All right, looks like maybe our AM player is going to rely on that troop transport for him to be able to win this planet, or he's just decided to give it up. Uh, Eldrath shows up at planet number one. That's only going to be a one-resource planet, and that's kind of the shitty thing about sending your warlord there is you're definitely not getting much benefit from doing so. Eldrath does note exhaust this anxious infantry platoon. The warlock destructor is going to be able to mop it up, but then the troop transport could pop, uh, have a couple swings at the warlock destructor. Uh, Eldrath you know, I guess so much of this depends on what exactly our players draw. Uh, looks like Prezi, our AM player, got a couple of cards, one resource, which isn't really saying much. He just got a couple of kind of, you know, not terribly combat useful units for the following round. And then our Eldar player just uh, drew quite the mountain of resources, so one card in total and five resources. I was going to say planet number two is pretty important just because whoever ends up winning that planet, if this ends up being a very hyper-aggressive game, Planum allows you to move one of your units from a planet to another planet, so it's fantastic setup for a following round. You can make sure that your units aren't ready, and at the beginning of the game when you're trying to scrape together each and every drop of value, uh, squeeze every drop of value out of these cards, it could just be absolutely fantastic to do that. So we've got battle breaking out at planet number one. That's going to be the Anxious Infantry Platoon being swung upon by the Warlock Destructor. Note, Broderick War decided to send himself to planet number four uh, so he could get a card and a resource. Opposite that, Bealtain Guardians, he'll be able to kill it. He'll be able to activate any battle ability he would like, uh, which could be stealing one resource, it could be healing a unit, or it could be moving uh, one of his units. Although the only problem with that effect is unless he wants to do uh, Ossus 4 and steal one resource, you know, there's not anything to heal. There's not really anything to move now that we saw that Anxious Infantry platoon getting killed and now I am asking myself and I guess I'm asking you viewers as well will we see the troop transport destroyed uh, looks like that anxious infantry platoon is just handily blown apart uh, slith mercenary is what our Eldorath player happened to come across and just note, our Eldar player, generally, uh, Eldar are known for being pretty damn good when it comes to command, and uh, that is exactly what Eldar is doing. He didn't get a lot of cards. There's not necessarily a ton of those out there on the table. Uh, I guess, <laughs> maybe I misspoke. There are three different planets that have a plus one card bonus. Uh, but we'll just have to see how things go down. Uh, Eldrath 
certainly had a huge resource income, but Broderick got significantly more cards. <laughs> you could say double as many cards. And uh, what are we going to see? I would presume uh, Karnath is going to be activating Ossus 4, but we may also see the Talarn Raiders repositioned. I think that'd probably be a poor life choice to do that. Uh, so talking out my ass here, it's indeed going to be a one resource drain. So Prezi is going to be plus one. Terror Lord is going to be minus one. We're about to move into our HQ phase. That'll be four additional resources and two cards for each of our fine players. Terror Lord has initiative, and let's take a look at what he got. He got a couple copies of Empower. <clears throat> Normally, this is a pretty potent event, uh, but it's often enough used for shields. Our Eldar player has a giant surplus of resources, uh, but what kind of sucks is that this could be a pretty quick game. Like, Eldarath bought himself some time winning that first planet battle, uh, but the only combat unit he's got is a Slith Mercenary, and if he throws that into play, uh, it's potentially going to be a liability just because it present our am player has much more uh, just resource at his disposal more uh you know i guess uh monetary assets uh to expend on purchasing a slith mercenary than our eldar player may have to uh purchase it back himself uh at the opposite end of the table some interesting cards here we've got uh staging ground which generally players don't run too many copies of this in an am deck uh nowadays at least in a war deck but it's definitely something absolutely fantastic you toss it into play it can cost one uh well it always costs one and then during combat you can deploy an up to two cost army unit anywhere you'd like. It could be this Akalem Shrine Guard to swing for an unexpected three, or it could be this uh, Stalwart Ogren, which isn't necessarily the best play against uh, Eldar. Like, uh, it would be entirely immune to Mind War, but it's not immune to... Uh, God, I, uh, Eldrath, Eldrath's ability, because it's only immune to enemy events. So Exterminatus, Doom, uh, all of those are great, but not so much that. But uh, since we're allied with Dark Eldar here, Archon's Terror is going to be another thing it's nicely immune to. I guess, but again, the weird thing about Stalwart Ogren is unless you put it to a non-green planet, all AM units cannot be routed anyway, so kind of an interesting inclusion, probably not one I'm a huge fan of myself, but, you know, Prezi's doing extraordinarily well uh, in the East Division, so who am I to argue? We've got that Slith Mercenary being tossed out to planet number five, which is going to be our newest planet. It's yet another green planet. Looks like Prezi got a little bit lucky in regard to the planet layout, uh, just because I'm seeing uh you could say i'm practically green with envy when it comes to this planet layout as terrible as that is i've truly become my father and uh looks like uh planet number five is going to be that random card discard planet but perhaps even more important it's going to be the uh two card bonus planets and uh eldrath is going to need cards in a big way uh, lest he just get absolutely wrecked because if you look at broderick wars hq uh two copies of troop transport now means at any planet he can well at any green planet and there are a lot of green planets on the board four out of the five you can create up to four two two tokens and you can do staging ground dear viewers there's a reason why players are saying troop transport is pretty damn good and uh i think this is exactly why so you know killer strategy here in your top 11 cards of your deck make sure to draw two copies of your troop transport but in any case uh staging ground we've got that in play we've got two arms which could potentially ready that for another unexpected ambush style effect so that's incredibly nasty if it seems opportunistically desirable to throw away a two shield value card just to dump another unit onto the tabletop and it looks like our Eldar player is necessarily passed. He had to pay an additional resource just to keep this Warlock Destructor in play in the first place. And now we've got this Sakalem Shrine Guard positioned at planet number one. So Planum is going to be very important for our AM player to try to win just because you're definitely going to want to be able to do that relocation effect. Note, Broderick War is chilling in his HQ alone, so therefore he could show up at Barlas. Uh, our AM player's only got three resources relative to Terror Lord 7, 
so if he arrives at Barlas, I would imagine Broderick War might end up taking a bit of damage because there could be a considerable bit of shielding going on uh, to block off that effect. Like, let's say if Eldrath goes to planet number one, if the Warlock Destructor ends up being killed, uh, we could see Broderick go to planet number five, shut down that Slith Mercenary, try a whole bunch to attempt to kill the Slith Mercenary, fail to do so because of these two shield value cards, and then we could even see a Gift of Isha result in, well, I guess it's possible that we could see an unexpected bloodying of Broderick War, uh, but much more realistically, we could see Broderick being driven away from that planet, and then that forced random discard could uh, get rid of that copy of Preemptive Barrage, or Two Arms, and either of those would be definitely a, a, a not insignificant blow to our guard player. But looks like both of our fine sirs are going to be deciding where exactly they want to send their warlords. Uh, looks like Eldrath is going to be bringing a unit with him. If he shows up at planet number one, he'll be able to tap out, let's say, the I guess the Steel Legion Chimera. The Steel Legion Chimera is going to reduce. Uh, okay, so let's see how things break down. Uh, Broderick shows up at planet number five. Note these troop transports could be activated to back him up if uh, we see something unexpected like an impact power or uh, Gift of Isha kind of screw with things. Uh, but at planet number one, this Warlock Destructor is going to be arriving exhausted at that planet. Hopefully Terra Lord will take care of that in just one moment. And uh, Eldrath is going to be able to exhaust one of these units. So he's exhausting the Sakalem Shrine Guard. Now the Hellion Gang and the Warlock Destructor and Eldar, uh, Eldarath himself are going to be able to potentially kill off the Steel Legion Chimera. Once they do that, if they kill off the Sakalem Shrine Guard, then that will be the planet, and then uh, Eldarath could relocate the Warlock Destructor potentially to Karnath, and then if he wins uh, through that, that'll be three green uh, strong point icons, or more conservatively, more... Um, carefully playing more cautiously uh, if Eldrath decides to move instead his units to uh, our current planet number three he could win through those blue tech icons and he'd probably end up facing a little bit less uh Con contest, I guess. Less opposition. There'd be less of a conflict if he shows up there. Broderick War strikes gold during this turn's command phase, something just that I guarantee he wishes he had on the tabletop now. He's got a copy of Forward Barracks, his signature support. It's a card that many players are wondering if it's one of the strongest in the game. At the end of each and every combat round, uh, if you control an AM unit, whether it's an army unit token or warlord, uh, you put a guardsman token into play. And that's a 2-2 soldier, and if you can shield it, if you can use troop transports, that just makes things an absolute nightmare for Eldarath to try to surmount. And unless our Eldar player is running Subduel, which I can't imagine he's going to be, uh, then that is just going to be a monumental thorn in his side. So check this out, that's going to be that copy. The Hellion Gang took a swing, two damage to the Steel Legion Chimera. Mind War is going to result in the Chimera being... Uh, exhausted. Now, are we going to see troop transports? I would imagine that if we're going to see it at any time, it would be now. Like, let's uh, think to ourselves, let's say, okay, so Eldarath ends up taking his action, and that's going to be a swing, so Eldarath is now exhausted, so we see staging ground exhaust, and this is where things get interesting. Sakalem Shrine Guard is going to jump down to the planet, it's going to be able to attack for three, that could clear out the Hellion Gang, or it could nearly kill this copy of Warlock Destructor. So what exactly are we going to see? Okay, I was also wondering if this might uh, end up happening uh, as well. I am not normally one to go for killing warlords if I can help it, but the Sakalem Shrine Guard takes a swing of three at Eldarath. Now, are we going to see one or both troop transports used as one of them is indeed sacrificed? That's going to be one troop transport down. That's going to be two, two, two tokens. And if this were me, ladies and gentlemen, what I would do is I would probably have attacked the Hellion Gang with that Sakalem Shrine Guard, or I'd have attacked this Warlock Destructor just because I want to get these things far away from the planet. Uh, but of course, when you're playing against an Eldar player, he's got Gift of Isha, so I suppose instead of going for the Gift, he's trying to deal out as much uh, lasting, persistent damage as possible and going for the attempted bloodying of Eldarath, and he's trying to drain his 
his opponent of shield cards. So at the present moment, he could deal out at most six additional points of damage. His opponent has got three cards in hand. Uh, unfortunately, even the discard of one shield would prevent Eldorath from being bloodied, and if Eldorath is able to trigger the battle ability here of Iridial, uh, then that will result in any and all damage being pulled off of him. So I would imagine at this point our... Okay, I guess we're keeping on seeing our Astro Militarum player trying to bloody Eldorath. Perhaps he's going for it. Uh, I guess he... Well, I was going to say he could maybe do two arms and dump another unit into play, but there's nothing he can really... You know, he doesn't have another unit in hand, even though he's got two resources to do it. There we see another use of troop transport. That's going to be another two guardsman tokens. We have seen both copies of Empower discarded. And are those going to be the... Okay, let's see if the gamble pays off. That's a bold move. Uh, but like I said, let's see if it pays off. The Guardsman token is going to take a swing, and why don't we see the shield used now? Uh, because I can only imagine that Terror Lord is going to want to bait out this Guardsman token taking a swing at Eldorath. Note, Eldorath is going to be uh, retreating from this planet. Will we see Nullify discarded? Yep, there we go. I was going to say it's probably not too tremendously useful at this point. Foresight is probably going to be more... Uh, useful just because you can basically guarantee that Eldrath, like let's say Eldrath shows up anywhere, he can, if it looks like he's going to get bloodied, he can use Foresight to uh, leave. Okay, I can't exactly say I was expecting that. Uh, at the end of combat, our Eldar player retreats with every single unit he's got, and uh, now I'll just be very curious to see if during the following turn, Broderick, who's going to have just a mountain of units in his HQ, I wonder if uh, our Broderick war player is perhaps pissing himself out of concern that his uh, opponent has uh, a copy of Doom or something like that, because that is going to be quite uh, the large number of units sitting in his HQ. Interestingly, we see that Steel Legion Chimera repositioned to our current uh, planet number three. That's going to be another planet where the Eldar player has initiative and it's only got one initiative, uh, one initiative point. Uh, it's only got one hit point remaining. My uh, mistake there. So note, Prezi uh, is going to take a swing at Terra Lord's uh, Slith Mercenary at Barless. The oh god, that is going to be a random card discarded and uh, I guess maybe something we were wanting to... S okay, well, I was... Ugh, either one of those cards, it would have been bad to see. I was going to say, perhaps what uh, Broderick wanted to do is he wanted to deal as much damage as possible to get uh, Eldrath to retreat from that planet, and then maybe he was hoping for the random card discard associated with Barless, uh, because clearly Terra Lord's hand had been depleted of shields. Uh, perhaps he was wanting that to be the random discard of of a uh, gift of Isha. So note during our deploy phase here, this Warlock Destructor is going to be a four resource cost unit. And uh, once you've paid four resources for a three, four with one command icon uh, that's shown up at a planet exhausted twice, it's much less of a bargoon. So let's see. Uh, Astro Militarum player has initiative. First play, of course, as if there's anything else you want to see right now, it's going to be good old forward barracks. And uh, talk about something difficult to chew through. What is one of the Eldar faction's biggest weaknesses? Why? It's, uh, you know, as, a, as I'm sure you well know. It's going to be area effect. So what's going to be hard for them to kill? Uh, a whopping total of six goddamn units sitting on any of these planets. Uh, if Broderick shows up at Iridial, that means he's going to... Uh uh, be able to block it off. There's no way in hell that Eldorath is going to be able to win at that planet. That means Eldorath cannot heal. Uh, Eldorath was fortunate enough to get another copy of Nullify, but under normal circumstances, preemptive barrage uh, would absolutely ruin our Eldar player. Uh, note, our Astra Militarum Deuter came across a copy of Inquisitorial Fortress. That could quite nicely route this copy of Starbeam's Council or a Warlock Destructor away from a planet. And uh, let me check the discard pile here of our Eldrath player. Yeah, looks like Bealtan Guardians is going to be the topmost Eldar faction army unit. And if you're an Eldar player and uh, we're playing together, you know, some sort of freak accident occurs where I'm actually playing a game of Conquest, feel free to invest two resources and a card to bounce back a Bealtan Guardians. I'd be totally okay with that. 
that. Uh, so that situation about sucks for Eldrath. So here's my prediction. My prediction is Broderick is going to show up at Iridial, absolutely block off Eldrath, win uh, that planet. That's going to be a green strong point icon, uh, you know, a blue tech icon, red material icon. He's already got one tech icon. And then uh, Broderick could probably just show up at Karnath, keep that pain train rolling, and uh, that could be the game for him. Or he could stretch things out a little bit and uh, arrive at Ossus 4. But let's see what exactly is going on. We've got that Inquisitorial Fortress uh, note. We've got that Starbane's Council positioned at planet number 4. So it's potentially going to win Eldrath a couple cards, which he's going to be in desperate need of. And in regard to where Eldrath is going to go, uh, we lost that copy of Foresight, so it would be a... It wouldn't be the worst idea in the world for Eldrath to show up at Karnath. Uh, I would imagine Eldrath is going to be tempted to show up at planet number 5, Taurus, because he'll control fewer units. I mean, like, you know, take a look, obviously. Uh, okay, so very... Uh, it's an unconventional play, but I think it's a great play, and uh, mad respect goes out to our guard player. Inquisitorial Fortress is used during... Um, the deploy phase to remove the Starbane's Council from planet number four. Uh, note, Terra Lords only got two cards remaining in hand, and uh, if you remove Starbane's Council from planet number four, that means your opponent's not going to be winning any... Uh, any cards or resources associated with that planet unless uh, he sends his warlord train to that planet. And if he does that, if he drops off the Destructor, the Hellion Gang, and the Starbane's Council, then you know what? Have your two goddamn cards. I'll be able to win at planet number one and planet number two, and planet number four is definitely nowhere near my victory condition. So, Eldrath shows up at planet number two. Eldrath is going to exhaust that Steel Legion Chimera. Broderick War, as I expected, arrives at planet number one. Broderick War also threw out a copy of Ammo Depot. And note, Broderick's got a copy of a Homeboy's Commissarial Bolt Pistol in hand, which is going to be a three shield value card, or... Uh, if, well, I guess Eldar and Chaos aren't exactly a thing, so Warp Storm isn't uh, exactly a card we're going to have to worry about, but let's see how combat is going to uh, just uh, be decided. It looks like Prezi only ends up getting one card and one resource, uh, and Terror Lord ends up with uh, one, or sorry, uh, Prezi got one card, zero resources, and Terror Lord got uh, one of each. So, Iridial is going to be won by Broderick War, and it looks as though my brain in the early morning is a little bit slow to be processing information. Iridial is going to strip all the damage off of that Steel Legion Chimera. Uh, it, of course, is exhausted, but uh, Eldorath is at this planet. Are we going to see Eldorath exhaust? What so sucks for our AM player is if we had another copy of Sakalem, Sh well, not Sakalem Shrine Guard, that would be bad. Let's say, I guess the dream would have been a snakebite thug, something like that, since he's allied with orcs. Uh, if Eldrath would have, and this is a great move uh, on Eldrath's part, uh, <laughs> obviously. So Eldrath retreats. I was going to say if Eldrath would have swung, if he'd have made that mistake, he'd have potentially dealt one point of damage to the Steel Legion Chimera. Then we could have seen Staging Ground used, and uh, that could have been... Uh, gosh, a snakebite thug attacking for three, minus two, thanks to a gift of Isha, still would have been a bloodied Eldrath, and then things would have been absolutely just terrible for, uh, our Eldar player, so there's a lot of stuff to chew through here for our AM player, but he might be able to deal at least a little bit of damage, uh, before he loses this planet. The Hellion Gang with initiative, okay, maybe it looks like it's not going to take that first attack. Uh, the Steel Legion Chimera is only going to be able to attack for two, uh, thanks to Broderick, the Guardsman token is only going to be able to attack for one. All right, looks like they retreat, so uh, it seems like Broderick is just wanting to, uh, I guess, just uh, save each and every unit possible. He doesn't want to throw their lives away. And then, God, that is just a beautiful play on part of Eldrath because Karnath is going to be able to uh, trigger Taurus, and that'll be three cards added to our Eldar player's hand. 
So that was an absolutely lovely move. And uh, let us see. So he got a copy of Archon's Terror, which uh, I would imagine Broderick War is not going to be showing up at Karnath because of these Eldar units. I think it's much more likely he'll show up at Ossus 4 to try to win at that green planet. Uh, God, man, how things change quickly. Terror Lord now has 12 resources and 8 cards. It's almost as if there's a pretty good reason that he's undefeated thus far in the league. He's got a copy of Archon's Terror, he's got two Gift of Isha, two Starbane's Council, and an Empower as well. And now all of a sudden things aren't looking quite so in the bag, uh, you know, like a done deal for Broderick. Broderick himself came across a copy of No Mercy. That's uh, a very interesting, unconventional card for a Broderick War deck. That's the first time I've seen it, uh, but it could definitely pay off in dividends, I guess, in bloodying Eldrath or just ensuring that you're going to be able to kill off one of these opposing units. But we've also got the Anxious Infantry Platoon, which is going to be great. Really, the only problem is that uh, if Eldar, if our Eldar player wins at the first planet, he's going to be able to trigger Taurus again. That's going to be all the more cards and resources for him. And he may well be able to break the back of our uh, guard player here at planet number two. So I can only imagine that our guard player is going to dump Broderick in his train at planet number two. Eldarath might end up going to planet number three. Uh, Eldarath can't foresight away in case he ends up stuck with a bad commit, uh, but he does have three two-shield value cards. I don't believe last turn we were actually able to see benefit uh, from our guard player putting out this copy of Ammo Depot, which is, I would only imagine, uh, you know, a big bit of a shame for him. But I'll be very curious to see how the remainder of this game gets resolved. The Incubus Warrior is now sent to planet number three, and that means Eldrath, I guess, why didn't I think of this myself? Eldrath might send himself to Taurus uh, just to try to activate that planet twice, and that's definitely going to incentivize our AM player to do something like put a copy of Anxious Infantry Platoon at that planet to block off Eldrath from drawing a few cards. But, you know, it definitely kind of sucks to um, have to give up any of your combat units. I guess uh, Staging Ground could be used in a pinch, if need be, uh, to have a unit arrive at that planet like the Platoon just to ensure that Eldrath isn't going to be able to win it, uh, just to drive him away from that planet. And, of course, uh, Archon's Terror is not going to be able to remove a an AM unit from a green planet. So Broderick gets his Commissarial Bolt Pistol, but I guess that creates a difficult situation in regard to mathematics for your opponent, like they're going to be wanting to bloody your Warlord, but then if they deal a bunch of damage to your Warlord and then your Warlord retreats, they haven't killed a bunch of your units, and then you've got a bunch of action advantage building up as you pick off their units, and then you've got way more units than they do remaining. Uh, again, I believe this is going to be the fifth resource we've seen invested in this Warlock Destructor, a monumentally expensive guy, and all of a sudden the value. You know, like, he's gotten a lot of use out of the Warlock Destructor, but man, oh man, that is just a, a, a very, very expensive unit. And I guess in the words of Dan Jung, they may as well have just uh, called the Warlock Destructor the, the Eldar Extortionist. So let's see. Those two copies of Starbane's Council are going to be fantastically well-served, repositioned at Ossus IV to block off the victory condition of Broderick War. Uh, Terra Lord still has to pick up two of any one kind of planet-type icon to win. Uh, therefore, Eldarath might have to win at planet, uh, well, if he wins Karnath and he wins the last planet, he'll be able to win the game, but then again, anytime you say, I won the last planet, you won the game, uh, that's going to be a victory condition for him, or it'll be planet two and three uh, would also win Eldar the game. Or, for Broderick, looks like he's only going to have to win uh, Karnath, or Ossus IV, or Barless. I could assume that he is going to go for our current planet number two, and uh, looks like we're starting to see our Eldar player build up a bit of an army potentially worthy of Mordor at that planet. Staging Ground is going to pay off big time when Broderick has all of his guys show up, 
they're all going to be uh, ready for the following round, and those uh, copies of Gift of Isha could just be incredibly important when it comes to recurring Warlock Destructors, recurring Starbane's Councils to the table, and uh, that Empower, if not used for shields, could give a hell of a lot of different units all a plus one attack, plus one hit point bonus. We've got that Anxious Infantry Platoon being played uh, to planet number two, and now I can only imagine that... Uh, Broderick is perhaps just hoping and praying that he ends up coming across a copy of, uh, not a copy of Staging Ground, a copy of some kind of army unit, either during the command phase or by the time uh, combat gets to planet four. Like if Eldrath shows up at this planet, we could see Ammo Depot draw Broderick a card. It might uh, be an AM unit, and then that'll pay off just fine for him. Uh, note, Eldrath does have a copy of Nullify, but if he does use Nullify, then he's going to be very, very, very much at risk of a staging ground here. Uh, but then again, maybe it's not going to make that much of a difference, although... I guess, you know, what what would really suck is, let's say, Eldrath arrives at whatever planet. Let's say planet number four, it goes perfectly for him. Karnath triggers Taurus, Eldrath triggers Taurus. The following round, Eldrath is going to have these three dudes in his HQ with him. His movement is going to be somewhat confined. Uh, if Eldrath gets bloodied this round, whether it's through nullifying a preemptive barrage or attacking a unit which would be very foolhardy and I don't think Terra Lord is by any means going to fall into that trap uh, that means the following round he'll have to go someplace relevant to combat or he'll have to give up these three units which are a grand total of a lot of resources among all of them like seven minimum uh, and three cards Eldrath will be sent to a combat situation, preemptive barrage could result in game over for Eldrath right there uh, or uh, Eldrath is going to have to spend uh, just incredibly valuable combat action in order to retreat, and uh, each and every combat action you give up is going to be one more potentially dead or wounded unit. It's going to move you one step closer to forward barracks, grinding out an attrition-style victory for the guard player. And that could definitely result in things going all the way bad. So it looks as though both of our players have currently passed. I was going to predict, yep, El uh, Eldrath going to planet number four, Broderick going to planet number two. Uh, you know, how clearly telegraphed were those plays? The answer is very, very obviously telegraphed. But what sucks? Here's what sucks. That's only going to be one uh, planet one in regard to command for... Broderick War. So, look at all this income for our Eldar player. It's going to be a grand total of four cards and two resources in total. And let's see what we got. We got a copy of Doom, which, uh, uh, you know, I was going to say too little too late, but at this point, it's just not exactly relevant. We got another copy of Warlock Destructor, which is going to be critical for uh, our Eldar player trying to break the back of the, you know, Broderick War fellow here. Uh, we've got a Void Pirate, not the most useful thing in the world. Slith Mercenary is good. Uh, Archon's Terror is going to be a shield, which it's definitely a shame to see that being relegated to a shield. Uh, but we're going to see the double Taurus activation, I can only imagine. Imagine, like, let's say all of these Eldar units are eventually going to end up dead. We'll see additional Guardsman tokens generated to replace whatever it is that ends up being lost at this planet. Um, so let's see it. Let's see if we see... Uh, okay, so here's Taurus being activated. What exactly are we going to get? It's going to be... Uh, well, is it going to be resources or is it going to be cards? It may not be the worst idea to do both uh, this time. Like, one round of resources, one round of cards, just because you're going to want to be able to play out a whole hell of a lot. But I guess if I were to tally everything up, looks like it does go with cards, it's going to be four. Uh, I guess in power, you'd probably want to play conventionally, maybe. So it's going to be, uh, like, like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 or so resources. We'll, we'll have to see how things end up broken out. So Eldar wins that planet. Taurus is going to be a thing. Will we see preemptive barrage on these three units at this planet? Will Eldarath have the audacity to nullify that effect? And if so, will uh, Staging Ground isn't going to be able to put any unit? So maybe we'll see uh, a rather ballsy Eldarath nullify that uh, preemptive barrage, but with five cards in hand in the Staging Ground... 
Astra Militarum runs a lot of cheap units, so that could be a giant risk for Eldorath. And like I said, is he going to be willing to give up a combat action just to have his warlord bloodied now and then show up at a planet and then retreat but drop off all these units? But looks like Preemptive Barrage is not going to be used after all. Uh, maybe we'll see that next turn. Perhaps not. Uh, our guard player controls initiative because his warlord is present. The enemy warlord is not. Note, it's a green planet. Anxious Infantry Platoon is going to attack for four against that copy of Starbane's Council. The copy of Council is only going to take two points of damage, and therefore we could see Starbane's Council swing for five to try to kill off this copy of the, uh, you know, Steel Legion Chimera. And that is exactly what we're going to see. Will we see Preemptive Barrage or uh, Two Arms Discarded? My heart tells me that we might see one of these two shield cards discarded just because it's going to be of the paramount importance to keep that alive. Potentially uh, to soak another attack of swing from the other Starbane's Council, that copy of Two Arms, which is not the best thing in the world, ended up getting ditched and our... Uh, our guard player is going to want to run through cards so that he can get at least a little bit of use out of Ammo Depot. Two arms isn't doing a whole hell of a lot if you don't have a bunch of units sitting in your HQ, if you don't have Catachan Outpost sitting on the tabletop, so I definitely wouldn't mind seeing that kind of filtered from play. Our guard player is going to take a swing here that's going to be two points of damage dealt out to the still ready copy of Starbane's Council, and I can only imagine that he's doing this just in case uh, the Eldar player is considering retreating or something devious like that. So uh, we see a copy of... Well, I guess that makes perfect sense because it attacks for three, and the Starbane's Council has three total hit points. Let me rephrase. Uh, Doom is going to be discarded. Entirely irrelevant to, to the remainder of this game. Uh, for the most part, you know, Broderick kills off any army units that retreat from his planet. Uh, green units can't route or be be routed or retreat in the first place. So, you know, whatever. That is what it is. That copy of Starbane's Council directs a swing toward that Steel Legion Chimera, which, you know, I'm okay with. Uh, that unit has been taking a whole hell of a lot of punishment, but that is definitely what it is meant to do. Uh, it looks like our AM player is thinking for a moment. Perhaps he's thinking, am I a space marine? Do I have an indomitable in my hand uh i don't exactly think so uh let me see i guess a little bit of confusion on my part so the starbane's council is attacking the steel legion chimera all of a sudden the steel legion chimera is oh i see uh so uh okay oh i get it okay so here's what happened. Starbane's Council kills the Steel Legion Chimera. That means it leaves play. The Commissarial Bolt Pistol targeted uh, the remaining copy of Starbane's Council. So that is where my confusion lie or lay. <clears throat> And at this point, Broderick War is set up at this planet. Will he remain at this planet, or will he retreat? If he stays, he runs the risk of Gift of Isha bringing a Starbane's Council back to play. So I think the conservative thing to do for Broderick would be to retreat. It's going to be very tempting to kill off this other copy of Starbane's Council, but... Okay, that's an interesting play. Let's see how badly it's going to come back and punish Broderick. I was going to say if he were to kill both copies of Starbane's Council, that could be two Gift of Isha's, and that could be a total of 10 damage directed at Broderick. That's going to be Gift of Isha number one. It's going to return a Starbane's Council to play as the topmost unit in our Eldar player's discard pile. That is going to be able to take a swing of five at Broderick. And then it's all going to come down to, are we going to see preemptive barrage discarded as shields uh, just to make sure that Broderick only ends up taking uh, three points of damage as opposed to five. And the instant that Broderick ends up bloodied, then things are going to start to go tremendously bad for our... <clears throat> 
for our AM player. So preemptive barrage is indeed used to shields. That's going to bring us to the almost the end of a combat round. Looks like ammo depot. There we go. Uh, that is going to be enough. So a copy of Mystic Warden, and that's going to be able to be staging grounded into play to block off Eldarath from winning Taurus. Uh, so good on that unit for being able to block the Eldar player because... Uh, like, let's see, we've got two one-value shield cards, and that's really going to be all it takes um, to potentially bloody Eldorath, or at the very least, uh, force him to retreat. So, great luck, I guess, on part of Broderick. <sighs> wow, all right, so Broderick indicates he's going to stay with each and every one of his units. If it were me, I would have retreat with Broderick War... Uh, okay, so let's say, uh, I guess the initiative was won by Broderick. Uh, he retreated with his warlord, but that was after he indicated that he's going to stay. I could only imagine that that was going to be at the end of the combat round, so it kind of confuses me in a big way why Broderick's first action would have been to uh like you should have just retreat at the end of the combat round so i'm just gonna say it that was a suboptimal play and it's resulted in the death of a sakalem shrine guard uh so that starbane's council took a swing now it's going to be up to our am player he's going to attack the starbane's council that's entirely hail it's going to be killed and uh goodbye gift of isha uh Starbane's Council, the other copy of Starbane's Council is going to be killed, and then Osus 4 is going to mean plus one resource for Prezi and uh, minus one resource for Terra Lord. So battle won by Broderick War. Now we're going to see Taurus. And let's see if we've got that Mystic Warden play. Looks like that's maybe a little bit premature. Yeah, Terra Lord says I'm going to go ahead and gain three resources. I'm at least glad he didn't draw cards. Prezi calls out, no, wait. Uh, because Staging Ground is going to throw out that copy of Mystic Warden. So yeah, a little bit uh, hasty there. Let's all take our time, dear players. And now uh, Mystic Warden drops into play at that planet. It's going to be a 3-2 unit. And uh, that about sucks for Eldrath because as a 1-1, one, one, he's not going to be able to kill a 1-2. Uh, sorry, a 3-2. So what can Eldrath do? He can attack and he can get bloodied and lose the battle. Or Eldrath can retreat and live and uh, lose the battle. He's not going to be able to trigger Taurus, uh, but then the Mystic Warden is going to be, uh, you know, sacrificed. But Eldrath has lived long enough that he's going to be able to make all the difference in the world because, like, let's say, okay, I guess I wasn't exactly expecting that, but it's certainly, uh, you know, a totally fine play, albeit at the risk of... Uh, well, I guess it's not really a risk. Like, the Commissarial Bolt Pistol's in place. There was nothing that our AM player could have done to save the Mystic Warden, but Gift of Isha means Starbane's Council is going to be returned to play. That's going to be a dead uh, Mystic Warden. But, you know, even though you denied your opponent... You didn't deny your opponent of three resources, but what did they get? They got one resource profit and now they have one fewer copy of gift of isha in their deck so this could be the final round by all means uh our eldar player has used up two copies of gift of isha i very much hope he enjoyed uh, getting as much use as he could out of those effects because now it is going to be one hell of an uphill battle for eldarath here I think this Warlock Destructors cost a grand total of six resources throughout the course of this game, and I don't even really think it's killed that much. So, I don't know. If there's any, like, not value unit, it's this Warlock Destructors just been this, you know, just tapeworm in Eldarath's gut, just leeching uh, all the nutrients out of the Eldar economy. And, uh, you know, I guess that's why the stock market on uh, all the different Eldar craft worlds has just crashed. It's all because of this bastard Warlock Destructor here. But we've got a fresh copy of Warlock Destructor, fresh grad from college, ready to, uh, you know, go on down to Wall Street, try to earn his first million. Uh, he's 
now nicely positioned at planet number one. We've got a copy of Spirit Seer Aerithal also garrisoned at planet number one. He's going to be able to attack for two, strip a damage off of another unit, so therefore he's going to definitely be a bit of a priority target. Suppressive Fire is something drawn by our AM player. We've also got a copy of Elysian Assault Team, so it's definitely going to be uh, in Broderick War's best interest to get the hell away from planet number one as quickly as possible. And in fact, I would not send him there in the first place at all. I would send Broderick to planet number two. And uh, is Eldrath going to arrive to, I can only imagine, planet number one? The answer is yes, because otherwise he loses the game. Note Broderick, or sorry, uh, Broderick is fine. He's got three hit points. He's, <laughs> he's beautiful. He's a perfect being, objectively. Eldrath has got one hit point. That means he need not retreat, because if he's bloodied, it doesn't really matter, and Eldrath arriving at that planet is going to have the opportunity to exhaust uh, one of these units. So, uh, I guess, let's see. That's going to be zero cards, two resources for our Eldar player, two cards, zero resources for Prezi, and uh, that is going to be a Snake by Thug and a copy of Staging Ground. Snake by Thug can be put into play by Staging Ground, so that is just great. Uh, Eldrath, his ability is going to knock out the Anxious Infantry Platoon, so definitely an incorrect order of events, but what are you going to do? For our Eldrath player, things are not looking great because he's got two useless copies of Archon's Terror in hand. He's got a copy of Nullify, which uh, is not tremendously useful unless he wants to nullify a suppressive fire. Uh, and will he do that? Looks like we're going to exhaust a Guardsman token or perhaps a Talarn Raider since it's attacking for even less. Uh, as soon as a Warlord is not present. Okay, I guess we see a Guardsman token exhaust, and that'll potentially be an exhausted Warlock Destructor. I guess if it were me, I'd use uh, Nullify to block off that effect, uh, unless... Eldorath thinks he's going to be able to win at this planet. Like, note, each and every one of these AM units is going to be able to... Okay, there we go. We see that Nullify used, so the Warlock Destructor is going to be preserved. I was going to say, each and every one of these units, these Guardsman Tokens, is going to be able to attack for two. They're going to be exchanging rather favorably with our Eldar player, and each and every time we see a combat round come to a close, that's going to be an additional token. Uh, we've got a Snakebite Thug we can drop into play. We've got an Elysian Assault Team, and we've also got No Mercy, which could be great. Uh, in having Broderick ensure that one of these units ends up being killed. So, this is definitely too bad that we saw that Slith Mercenary have an opportunity to act. I really wish I could have seen our AM player purchase control of that Slith Mercenary, so that would have been a little bit of an oversight there, just because six resources is far greater uh, than is two, and, you know, the Slith Mercenary could have made things all the more impossible for our Eldar player to win. The Steel Legion Chimera takes a swing of two, or while it incurs two points of damage, then it takes a swing of three directed at spirit seer Arathal. the spirit seer is going to okay there we go that's going to be that copy of no mercy uh broderick war is exhausted that means Arathal is going to end up being killed so good riddance to spirit seer and that means he's not going to be around long enough to uh start stripping damage off of uh eldorath as if it would make any big bit of difference we see a copy of Warlock Destructor swing at the Steel Legion Chimera. It's going to be destroyed, but now we've got a whole hell of a lot of ready Astro Militarum faction units with which to just run amok and start killing off all these Eldar units. Uh, there's no copy of Gift of Isha, so let's say Stalwart Ogren swings at the Starbane's Council. We've got some shields, but, you know... Uh, no, we saw, okay. Uh, yeah, we saw a card shift in the hand, and then Archon's Terror is going to mean that it's alive, but then a Guardsman token is going to be able to deal the killing blow. So, fatality. Starbane's Council is going to be dead. A couple Guardsman tokens are going to be able to uh, take out this Warlock Destructor. A couple Guardsman tokens are going to be able to kill off that unit, and it looks like our guard players just managed to reach critical mass at this planet. He's also got that copy of Staging Ground. He's also got the copy of Elysian Assault Team. And unless, for some reason, I've made some sort of horrible, crucial mistake, it is at this point going to be absolutely impossible for our Eldar player to come back and win this game. It has been decreed. It looks as though Terror Lord, who's thus far gone five wins and no losses, is about to have his undefeated streak broken. And I can only say that in a full realization that later today I'm going to be playing my own Week 6 match and I might have my 5-win streak uh, also brought 
to a, you know, just tragic halt and end. Uh, but we've seen a killed Warlock Destructor. We see Nullify discarded shields to preserve a Warlock Destructor, but it's insufficient. The Warlock Destructor succumbs. Nevertheless, under the withering fire of the Astra Militarum, the Sakalem Shrine Guard is going to kill off the Hellion Gang. Three divided by two is 1.5, rounded up to two. That is going to equate to a dead unit. Snakebite Thug is going to be bounced into play. That is also going to be an Ammo Depot, uh, adding an additional, albeit useless, card to the hand of uh, our other player here. That is kind of strange that you would kill the Slith Mercenary as opposed to purchasing control of it. Uh, you know, why not just buy control of it and then direct your attack toward uh, Eldrath? But regardless, we come to the end of a combat round. That is going to be an additional Guardsman token that I can only hope that our AM player is going to generate because why not rub a little bit more salt into the wound? I would definitely do it. Looks like Terror Lord calls out the GG, so that's going to be good game. Congratulations to Prezi of the East Division of the Loyalist Legions for managing to break the five-win streak of Terror Lord. That was a hell of a game. Very well played by our Eldar player. But of course, congratulations to Prezi. At this point, he is going to be a total of, uh, I believe, let's see, that would be four, uh, five wins and one loss. Terra Lord is also five wins and one loss. So a couple immensely talented players. It was a hell of a game. I very much hope you enjoyed this early morning match of Conquest LCG. So if at any point you'd like to express interest in the Black Crusade, be sure to check it out uh, because there's going to be openings next season be sure to check the video description for a link if you're at all interested in enrolling in next season's black crusade uh, this time we had something like 111 different entrants broken up into two different regions so that it can be as time zone friendly as possible the east and the west it's one match per week it's an absolutely fantastic experience and i cannot recommend enough that you sign up it's fantastic practice some of the best players in the world some of the worst players in the world and you might even have an experience like mine where you end up surprising the hell out of yourself so a thank you to prezi a thank you to terra lord and of course a thank you to you the viewer for watching and as always if you enjoyed this content be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already or if you are already subscribed you're encouraged to share this content because the more individuals there are that end up being exposed to content quest the more people might give this game a try they may join our living card game community and you know once our community increases in number altogether we continue to send an increasingly great message to fantasy flight games telling them to continue to support and develop this fantastic product if at any point you'd like to get in touch with me i would encourage you to do so through facebook or on twitter and if at any point you feel inclined to help support the hive tyrant I would be absolutely honored, humbled, and deeply appreciative were you to make a donation or contribution to my Patreon. Even the donation of a dollar or two on a strictly monthly basis is just incredibly helpful in allowing me to recoup some of my file hosting and operating expenses, and it definitely allows me to reinvest in this channel, and I'm looking to purchase some uh, additional audio equipment to make the Tyrant cast and the rest of my videos all the better. So. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.